My name is Dr. Angie Ambers and I work for the Institute of Applied Genetics which is an institute of the University of, Health, University of North Texas Health Science Center um, in Fort Worth, Texas and I primarily work on characterization and DNA analysis of historical and archaeological skeletal remains although I do do work um, in developing improved methods for skeletal remains analysis. This poster is a really interesting case. Um, this was uh, an individual named Ezekiel Harper, and he was a pretty famous or infamous Confederate guerrilla scout from the American Civil War. And he actually survived the war, and he became a prominent wealthy doctor in the West Virginia area. And he was subsequently, after the Civil War, beaten to death and murdered in a home invasion. Um, he had amassed quite a bit of land. He owned 4,000 acres, which back in the 1800s was quite a bit. And when he was murdered, he was single, he never married, and there was a, a small boy that allegedly was the son of his affair with his Native American maid. So it's kind of a Thomas Jefferson-ish type case that was kind of scandalous during that time period. And after he was murdered, of course, the maid was sent away and the little boy was sent to the county farm, which essentially was an orphanage at that time. And the little boy grew up, he ended up growing up and having seven children of his own, and he grew up telling all the locals that he was related to the infamous Ezekiel Harper. And his family and his children over the generations followed the development of the DNA field, and when they thought the time was right, they petitioned the state of West Virginia to exhume Ezekiel Harper's remains to do testing to see if there was a fam familial link between the alleged son and Ezekiel Harper. We did YSTRY chromosome testing um, based on the family members that were still living that were available to give reference samples. So we did establish a, a familial link between the alleged son and Ezekiel Harper. The children of this individual, his name is Earl, her, his name was Earl Maxwell, the alleged son of Ezekiel Harper. The children, he was kind of ridiculed. You know, he grew up in, in an orphanage and he was telling everybody that he was the son of this famous guerrilla scout, this famous Confederate Civil War soldier. And everybody kind of thought he was crazy. And so this kind of vindicates the family and, you know, gives them that, okay, we've had DNA testing done and it does establish a link between our father or our grandfather and Ezekiel Harper, so it's a little bit of vindication for him as well as the potential for potentially, you know, regaining that land. Working on skeletal remains is particularly challenging. It takes, processing the bone samples takes quite a bit longer than some of your standard samples like blood or semen or saliva. Um, typically the process involved in that is we get the skeletal remains in, we take a look at what skeletal elements we have available for testing, kind of decide which bones would be most appropriate or might give us the best chance of recovering DNA and then we literally have to, it's a destructive technique, we actually have to saw the bones um, into small sections and then we put these sections in sterile vials and submerge them in liquid nitrogen and with that liquid nitrogen we grind the bone into a fine powder. It almost comes out to be similar to like a baby powder format and that's how we extract the DNA from the samples and that processing takes quite a bit of time as well as all of the um, contamination prevention techniques and procedures that you have to go through to prep all of your materials just to work with those bones. With skeletal remains, um, because the DNA tends to be um, pretty damaged sometimes depending on the passage of time and the environmental conditions um, to which those skeletal remains were exposed, often what we will do is sample multiple different regions of the skeleton um, and or we'll do replicate testing. And so sometimes what you'll end up getting is a partial DNA profile from one sample and then you'll test another sample that you'll also get a partial profile and you're hoping that the partial profile that you got from one bone section is a little bit different, different markers different results with different markers from this other bone section. And then if you put enough of those partial DNA profiles together, the goal is to um, hopefully be able to put together a consensus DNA profile.